Good morning class 9th students I hope you all are fine and busy with your studies In my previous video lesson we have seen that Bassanio comes to Shylock to borrow 3000 ducats for 3 months He assures Shylock that Antonio is going to act as a surety for the amount Though Shylock does not want to help Bassanio, he agrees to give the loan on a bond foreseeing an opportunity to take his revenge on Antonio. We have also seen Shylock's aversion for Antonio in his soliloquy. Antonio never lends money nor does he borrow but he breaks the custom and agrees to bound himself for 3000 ducats for 3 months only for the sake of his friend Bassanio let's see what happens later let me read Shylock's dialogue when Jacob grazed his uncle Laban's sheep this Jacob from our holy Abraham was as his wise mother wrought in his behalf the third possessor, ay, he was the third. First, let me explain this biblical allusion. Jacob, Laban, Abraham and the phrase the third possessor. Abraham was the founder of the Hebrew nation. Isaac was his son and the second heir to family state. Isaac had two sons, Ishau and Jacob. Isaac wanted to bless his elder son, Ishau, but would do so after he brought him some savory meat. Jacob's mother, Rebekah, overheard this conversation. She wanted to get this blessing for Jacob. She told Jacob to fetch two goats to make a savory dish. Rebecca then asked Jacob to go to his blind father with the savory meat. In this way, Jacob, through the crafty assistance of his mother, got the blessing of his father. And Laban was Jacob's uncle. Let me explain Shylock's dialogue. When Jacob descended from holy Abraham and grazed his uncle Laban's sheep, his clever mother, planned on his behalf so that he became the third successor to the family property. Yes, he was the third. The next one is of Antonio's dialogue. And what of him? Did he take interest? Here, Antonio asks Shylock, what about Jacob? Had he taken interest? Let's see what does Shylock say. Shylock's dialogue. Not take interest. Not as you would say. Directly interest. Mark what Jacob did. When Laban and himself were compromised that all the inlings which were streaked and pied should fall as Jacob's hire. This way a way to thrive and he was blessed and thrift is blessing if men steal it not. Here, a reference is made to the story in the Bible. Jacob, to save himself from Ishau's anger, went to serve under his uncle Laban. An agreement was made between Jacob and Laban that the former should receive for his services the lambs which were born with spots or stripes. During the breeding season, Jacob placed wooden rods in such a position that shadows of the rods would fall on the sheep. By this means, Jacob is said to have influenced the sheep so much that almost all the lambs were born spotted or striped, and thus they became the property of Jacob. In this dialogue, Shylock explains that Jacob did not charge the direct interest as Antonio understands. But with his clever mind, Jacob got his share as the payment for his services. He also tells that 
all profit is a blessing if men do not steal it from others to news dialogue this was a venture sir that jacob sir for a thing not in his power to bring to pass but swayed and fashioned by the hand of heaven was this inserted to make interest good or is your gold and silver used and rams here antonio tells that was an enterprise for which jacob worked and it was not in his power to make it happen it was controlled and designed by the hand of god was this mentioned in order to justify the charging of interest he asked to shylock or does he consider his gold and silver as use and rams next is shylock's dialogue i cannot tell i make it breed as fast but not me sinoy here shylock says that he cannot tell him that he makes money increase as fast as use and rants but listen sinoy antonio's dialogue mark you this basanio the devil can cite scripture for his purpose and evil soul producing holy witness is like a villain with a smiling cheek a goodly apple rotten at the heart oh what a goodly outside falsehood hat here antonio criticizes shylock he tells basanio to listen shylock the devil is giving an example from the holy book to justify his purpose an evil man putting forth holy arguments is like a villain with a smiling face and like an attractive apple which is rotten from inside oh what an attractive external appearance falsehood has now who is falsehood here he is referring to shylock next one is shylock's dialogue 3000 ducats this is a good round sum 3 months from 12 then let me see the rate this dialogue is quite simple you can easily understand it let me continue the next one is antonio's dialogue well shylock shall we be be holding to you in this dialogue antonio ask shylock is he going to lend them money the next dialogue is of shylock which is very lengthy so i will read it in parts and will explain you in parts so uh, shylock's dialogue sinor antonio many a time and oft in the reality you have rated me about my monies and my usances still have i borne it with a patient shrug for sufferance is the batch of all our tribe you call me misbeliever cutthroat dog and spit upon my jewish gabardine and for all use of that which is mine own well then it now appears you need my help go to them you come to me and you say shylock we would have monies you say so you that did void your young upon my beard and foot me as your spurn a stranger cur over your threshold money's is your suit here shylock pours his heart out he reminds antonio the way he has treated him he tells antonio signoy antonio often he has abused him in the venetian stock exchange about his money and his money lending practices he has shrugged his shoulders and so food it patiently for patience is the batch of his race antonio calls him a non believer merciless dog and spits on his long jewish robe all because he puts to use that which is his own money now he needs his help very well he comes to him and say 
Shylock, we want some money. He spits on his beard and kicked him as he would kick a stray dog out of his house. He has come now with a request for money. Let me continue the dialogue. What should I say to you? Should I not say, hat a dog money? Is it possible? A cur can lend 3000 ducats or shall I bend low and in a bound man's key with a hated breath and whispering humbleness? Say this, fair sir, you spit on me on Wednesday last. You spurn me such a day another time. You call me dog and for these courtesies I will lend you thus much monies. Later, Shylock tells Antonio which kind of response he expects from him. Will he not say, has a dog any money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3000 ducats or will he bend low and anxiously in a low voice like a slave in a humble whisper say this, noble sir? You spat on me on last Wednesday. Another time you pushed me out of the way. Another time you called me a dog. And for this polite and courteous behavior, do you want me to lend you money? Let's see how does Antonio affirm Shylock's dialogue. Antonio's dialogue. I am as like to call thee so again. To spit on thee again, to spurn thee too. If thou wilt lend this money, lend it not. As to thy friend, for when did friendship take? A breed for barren metal for his friend, but lend it rather to thine enemy, who, if he break, thou mayst with better face exact the penalty. Here, Antonio affirms that he will continue to call him the same. He will continue to spit on him and will push him aside again. Antonio says to Shylock, if he lends him money, do not lend it as he would lend to a friend. Antonio asks a question to Shylock, has ever a friend lend to a friend in order to make a financial profit. Antonio tells to Shylock if he wants to lend money, lend it as if he is his enemy. Antonio also says that if he would fail to abide by the contract, he can claim the penalty from him. The remaining part of the lesson I will continue in my next video lesson. Till then, take care and have a nice time.